The views on a breath of fresh air podcast reflects the parties involved, and we encourage you all to use it as a conversational tool that will lead to personal studies of your own. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Welcome to a breath of fresh air podcast. Here with your hosts, Earl Roberts and Nakaz Gay. As a young person, Christianity can be so foggy, like smoke in the mirrors and so unclear. But we're here to bring you a breath of fresh air. Lead the way. And don't slow down unless I tell you to. Uh, Kahazai? From the look of it, that looks like the Shunammite woman coming to see us. Go to her and ask her if everything is right with her and her family. Is everything well with you? Is everything well with your husband? Is everything well with your child? All is well. I, I just need to speak to Elisha. Okay. Whoa, 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 whoa. Oh. what you doing? No, 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 don't, don't get off of him. Get off of him. Come, come here, come here. Leave her be. Because her soul is vexed within her. And the Lord has hid it from me and not told me about it. Did I ask for a son, my Lord? Did I not say, don't give me false hope? Gazai, gird your loins, take my staff, and travel ahead of us. If you meet any man, do not salute him. And if he salute you, do not answer him. Go to the child and lay my staff upon his face. Your staff? And I must go? Okay, got it. Don't talk to anyone. Don't greet anyone. Okay, understood. As surely as the Lord lives and you yourself live, I will not leave you. It's okay. I'll follow you to your home. In this episode, we delve into the realm of blessings, unexplainable miracles, and the power of unwavering belief. Get ready to be inspired and amazed by the incredible events that unfold in 2 Kings chapter 4. As always, be blessed and enjoy. All right, welcome back to another episode of A Breath of Fresh Air podcast here with your host, Nakaz Gate. <laughs> Robert, I was like, bro, you better, you better don't jump in front of this. Again. <laughs> <laughs> I see this guy has this maniacal look on his face. Like, what's happening? Yeah, I just oh think my! It last time. Hopefully, everyone out there is having a great week. Yet again, this is another week where we are recording the week of the pod. Don't worry, we'll we'll, we'll be back to our normal schedule soon. But it shows how busy our lives are. But we are committed to getting these episodes out, so hopefully everyone appreciates that. Um, how's your week been, man? Oh, not too bad, bro. You know, the first week of the month, that's a pretty busy time for work, you know? Mm -hmm. And so we, wrap, we just finished wrapping that up. My injury from last week, just an update. I am I am back. I, am, I think I'm getting all the mobility in my lower body. And so, you know, I can't Amen. complain. That's you know, a blessing. That's good. How that's was your week? Man... I had a trip last weekend, so I like my had a series of flight delays. Anyone who's been traveled recently knows that the airline industry is, I don't know what's happening with them. But long story, way less long. I didn't get back until 3, 8, 3 a.m. on Monday morning. Ooh. And it was uh I'm still dragging. <laughs> <All right. laughs> I'm still dragging. You are not. Oh uh, my, I already reserved the fact that I probably ain't gonna get enough rest until like the weekend at some point. And we'll see even how that goes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, these plans coming together, boy. <laughs> <laughs> the plans has come together quick. And you're yeah. like, oh boy. I um, have a week, I have a weekend to rest. <laughs> nope. <laughs> nope. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 
<laughs> you thought? Oh, oh boy. boy, but it's all good. It's all good. Um, weekly thought. I had a thought earlier in this week, but now it escapes me. And it's funny <laughs> how, how that happens. And the funny thing about it is I didn't even, I didn't even have to admit that. <laughs> True. But, true. um, yeah, man, I think overall, kind of breeds from a conversation I had with my cousin earlier this week, but I mean, over the weekend, but it's like being able to understand and hear God's voice and like using discernment to understand the difference between the enemy and God, because sometimes, you know, you have a decision to make and it's interesting, like when we're talking about Elisha, but there's still small voice and like God wasn't in the fire. He wasn't in the earthquake. He wasn't in the, um, what was something else? The wind. I think in the wind, yeah. The rushing wind. Um, but he was in the still small voice. And I think sometimes in life we have we're faced with many difficult decisions, many hard decisions, many big decisions. And we have a lot of thoughts. You know what I'm saying? We have a lot of thoughts, and some thoughts can be pulling us in two complete opposite directions. And it's up to us to settle down in the midst of the chaos, in the midst of the turbulence, and listen to the still small voice and discern that it's God's voice and understand what he's trying to tell us to do and which direction he's trying to move us in. Because there do be a lot of thoughts in your head, man. That's true. Some personal, very personal and selfish. Some might be good, but not the best. But we know ultimately God has the has our best interest in heart at heart. So yeah, that's just a thought. Um yeah, pretty I know good. everyone could apply that in their lives mm -hmm. and i mean we all face with these choices on a daily and i think i think we face with them more than we know but we just brush them off and saying god is god doesn't care about but this small choice <laughs> i know that's how yeah, i that, justified it half of the time <laughs> yeah that's what the scare me because you know i hear pastor say your your day is one in the morning or some something along mm -hmm. the line like are you wake up you know you protect yourself you cover yourself you know, that that could that could make or break your whole day. Like you could mm -hmm. have a bad day and realize, man, I didn't pray against this this thing happening, you know. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes you can't predict things, you can't predict how you're gonna hog, but sometimes I think about like mentally how I feel when I don't when I'm not in the mood to read. Like the past two or three weeks, I'll be honest with you, I read every day the Bible I'm talking about, but mm -hmm. Bro, sometimes it just feel like a checklist. Like, bro, I'm doing mm -hmm. this because I know I should read this every day, but not because I have a desire or I'm actually even paying the utmost attention and I'm paying. You know what I'm saying? And I wonder how to feel, bro. Because I'm like, bro, I want to honestly, like, I could just don't read. You know what I'm saying? Like, I could just do, like, I could just be lazy, you know? Mm -hmm. Or I could push myself and hope to build momentum until I get back to that point where I really like finding the like the enjoyment that I found in the past, you know, but mm -hmm. at the end of the day, I think it's better not to take the chance of being lazy or to, you know, not doing what you're supposed to do because you could get into us, you could fall into a slippery slope. And then I just feel like, you know, the Lord would prefer, you know, if I do the right thing, even if it goes against how I feel, you mm -hmm. know, I, 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 I think that's, that's something that we should always try to do. You know? Agreed. <clears throat> Definitely agreed. Like it's so interesting too. Like you can you fall into the slope of just doing it, but your heart ain't in it. Mm -hmm. But then it, it, it's weird because like is it better to do it when your heart ain't in it than to not do it at all? Right. Like that's that's the conundrum you face with. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and I'm like, you know, I think it's probably <laughs> better to read it. You know what I mean? Because yeah. hopefully, even when your heart ain't in it, you may remember something or you oh. may learn something. Or it might be you might read what you actually need to read to kick something else in your life. Mm -hmm. and, but you wouldn't get that opportunity mm -hmm. if you don't read, if you don't at least try. Yeah. I, I was philosophical um, questions. Was, Go for I, it. I, I was supposed to do a I was supposed to do a performance. This was like two, three years ago in the Bahamas. It was like a government, it was like a government related event. Mm -hmm. And the I told the person like I'm not gonna perform unless I have all my money to, before I step on stage. I don't, I'm not doing like a half now, half later. Like I want all now because I I don't live in the Bahamas. I, I can't run you down 
You understand what I'm saying? Like, and it ain't nothing protecting me. If you just say, no, you ain't getting your money. What I could do. So you, that, like, that's too much. Like, you know mm-hmm. what I mean? And so they, they, they guaranteed me that they would do that. Uh, they, um, it was like, they can give me a deposit and then they can give me the rest before I step on stage. I didn't get anything. You understand what I'm saying? And so I, I, I book a flight. I came down and then everything. And the dude was like, yo, I'm going to give you the money. I'm going to give you the money. And I was like, bro, I can't, I can't do business like this, bro. This, I, I am holding up my end of the bargain. Like I tell you, I was gonna book the flight. You just reimburse me. I'm making it easy on you. I didn't even, I didn't even give you the real price. What I wanted to, what I wanted <laughs> to charge you, right? And I turned to my, my engineer, who wanted to be my manager at the time, and I said, bro, what should I do? He said, I'll tell you this, bro. If you don't get on stage, you definitely ain't getting paid. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> I said, well, there y'all man. <laughs> I said, well, there y'all man. <laughs> so funny how simple some things just as me. <laughs> <laughs> so for the listeners out there, they, 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 they can see you leave them on a note. Like, did you actually get paid? <laughs> oh, I did go on stage. <laughs> I got paid months later, though. Mm-hmm. I did get paid, though. But you I did got get paid. paid. I got okay. paid one amount in full, but it was months later. And, and when I told my mom about that, She's like, oh yeah, that's that's government. That's government in the Bahamas like that. Like that's a she she explained to me that's like pretty standard, like, and I shouldn't even have been like that, like anxious, you know. But I know I just I just had a big fear about getting swindled, you know. So what's the lesson? Here's the lesson. Talk to your mom earlier in the process. Oh, definitely. <laughs> that's that's you can't go wrong with that. Oh my, oh my, that's awesome. Yep. So this week we are in Second Kings chapter four. Last week, we had the three kings who went against the king of Moab. And how would you say that ended? <laughs> it ended with, they did not, in this in this metaphor, they probably didn't go on stage because nobody won. You understand what I'm saying? Like, nobody, nobody benefited. So the three kings, they got the, a favorable response that they would have mm-hmm. wanted, meaning that they, would, they were not going to lose this war or this battle. Mm-hmm. However, they... Um, they didn't get the results. Like you have, you have, there's a purpose for this war. Sometimes you war for money, for peace, whatever the purpose is, right? Mm-hmm. They went to war, but they didn't get the purpose. They didn't achieve the goal that they sought out to, to achieve. Like Moab Agreed. was defeated. However, you are still at odds, right? You wanted mm-hmm. you wanted them to continue the, the agreement that y'all had in previous times where they would pay you or they would donate the amount of sheep, you know, for, for you all. But you all end up getting into a battle. You all end up taking things too far. You all end up destroying trees and just doing a bunch of stuff that was prophesied. And it just left with animosity between the, the, those kingdoms and Moab. Yeah, no so, one won that fight. Yeah, no one won. The people who should have won brought, I don't even know to say, brought curses upon themselves. <laughs> yeah, they, they um, you know, some sometimes that could happen to you, you know, bro, like, you could be in the right, you know. Mm-hmm. You know, and that's why, that's why I understand why Jesus says in Matthew 5, I think it's like around verse 40, 41, 42. It's like, mm-hmm. do good to those that persecute you. Mm-hmm. Love your enemies. Stuff like that, right? Mm-hmm. Because it's like, I can wrong you, Earl, and you can wrong me back. Now, two of us have consequences on our books because two people did wrong in the sight of God. Two people have sinned. Now, you, you sin out of retaliation, you know, but at the end of the day, you sin, like so, because mm-hmm. so now God looking like bro, but now you, know you disobey. Better. You disobey me, like you had a you had a you had a fuel with cars, but you can't get cars back without without dishonoring me. So what you gonna choose? You know mm-hmm. what I mean? And it's like, um, in doing good, in doing good, you could stay clean, and you know you ain't forfeiting yourself for no blessings or no, you're not forfeiting anything. But when you decide to repay evil with evil, now it's like okay. The punishment that Earl getting now, you open yourself to get that type of punishment as well. You know what I'm saying? That's a big part. <laughs> yeah, it don't seem fair though, like in a human standpoint. You know what I mean? But I Jesus is calling us to be the bigger man. I don't know who needs to hear that, bro. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> the whole concept of fair, man. The whole concept yeah. of fair. So it's human. A, it's, it's a human invention. Human <laughs> rationalization to try to yeah. understand righteousness. I feel like. Yeah, definitely. It's like, what is fairness? And, and it's on a case by case basis, you know, because I can feel like I treated you fairly, but you can feel like 
I was unfair to you. And both of us could have a valid concern. And you and you talk to someone and they'd be like, I see what they're saying. And when I say my point, you say, you know, I understand both sides. You know? <laughs> this reminds me of for the listeners out there who are like loyal listeners. We all we all we have a good friend, Dominic Perfall, who's a friend of the show. Who's yeah, a friend, friend of the, the show. show. For sure. He and I are natural born contrarians, but go on. <laughs> I just say this feel like when anyone makes a deal with this young man in, uh, in Monopoly, Monopoly, yeah, it's a fair deal to him. Yeah, for sure, for sure, <laughs> it's a fair deal for sure. And to his point, it could be fair, you know, but what is fair? <laughs> yeah, but what is fair based on who's metric? And that's the thing. In my eyes, I'm like, bro, you might be giving up more assets, right? These assets might mean more to to me. Than to do to you, you might have so many assets, you could you could just you could just spare assets. But the fact of the matter is, you giving me, I might I might give you one asset, you might give me three. On a, on a monetary standpoint, that that's not a fair deal. But my one asset could propel you to higher heights that your three oh, cannot hell. propel, right? Cannot <laughs> propel me to, right? So now, what is fair? Like you know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> oh my! But yeah, man. So. Where were we again? The whole Kings. Yeah, yeah they, we didn't even start the chapter yet. No. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, last week episode, definitely check it out last week. Oh, shameless plug, like and subscribe to the podcast if you guys are listening for the first time. A lot of you guys aren't subscribed, so please hit the subscribe button. Please do. Give us a rating or whatever on the streaming views. And if you are streaming, just go to YouTube, leave a comment, and hit the like button if you like it. You know what I'm saying? I tell you what, I'm not telling you how to, how to, yeah, how to rate was- us. You know what I'm saying? Don't bear false witness. You know, you know what I'm saying? Like, don't bear false witness. And if you don't like us, just write a comment and tell us what you don't like about us. Sure. <laughs> so, Second Kings chapter four. Okay. So now, again, same cut, switching sides. We're not even going to mention the kings in this episode. So we see we just um, it, it, the chapter starts reading from the New King James version. A certain woman of the wives of the sons of the prophets cried to Elisha, saying, Your servant, my husband, is dead. And you know that your servant feared the Lord, and the creditor is coming to take away my two sons to be his slaves. So just, again, background context for those out there who may or may not remember. In the uh, Hebrew culture, or Israelite culture, however you want to say it, um, if you also want debt... And you can't pay. There was no in modern days filing for bankruptcy. Right. So there was mm-hmm. indentured servants, indentured servitude. Whereas someone, the creditor, the person who, like you know, who you owe your debts to, can come and either put you or like your sons into servitude to pay off that debt. Up until the year of Jubilee. That's why the right. year of Jubilee was such a big thing in, in the Israelite culture. Because now, at the year of Jubilee, no matter what, all your the debts are forgiven. So all those who were, who were servants get to go back to their households, their land are restored, and everything is like reset again. Right. This like that. That's also like something else we could look at on a bigger scale, but that's a whole monetary discussion for a whole nother day. <laughs> <laughs> but in verse 2, you got something to say? No, I, no, I was, I only was gonna mention that. <clears throat> oh, okay. Not, like you ain't gonna be a servant for the rest of your life. Like no. And and if if you if you obey the law, if you do it the, the right way based on the Torah, <clears throat> that they they were only supposed to be. I think it was like seven years. Like mm-hmm. the seven year they they get free unless 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 you just fall in love with your with your um your employer or your master and you say no, I ain't going no way. <laughs> 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 I, I I ironically think that might have happened. Yeah. So Elisha said to her, what shall I do for you? Tell me, what do you have in the house? And she said, your maid servant has nothing in the house but a jar of oil. And he said, go borrow some vessels from everywhere, from all your neighbors. Empty those vessels. Do not gather just a few. When you have, And when you have come in, you shall shut the door behind you and your sons. Then pour it into all those vessels and set aside the full ones. So she went from him and shut the door behind her and the sons who bought the vessels to her. She poured it out. Now it came to pass when the vessels were full, full that she said to her son, bring me another vessel. And, she, and he said to her, there is not another vessel. So the oil ceased. Then she came and told the man of God, and he said, go sell the oil and pay your debt. And, and you and your sons live on the rest. 
So now when me and you was talking months ago and mm -hmm. we were saying, no man, it was a widow who Elijah healed. And he was like, no man is a widow who, no, not healed. Uh, it was a widow who Elijah ja. performed a miracle. And he was like, no, it was Elisha. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> or who, whatever side you was on, just some clarity, you know, but just for the listeners out there, y'all might get this mixed up as well. Both Elijah and Elisha have had run-ins with widows mm -hmm. that involve mir miracles surrounding food. Oil, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, oil and like bread, <laughs> specifically. In the first one, the oil didn't run out during the time of the famine. Yep. This one, the oil didn't run out until she was finished filling all the jugs. Right. And what's interesting too is like, it depends because some people say it could have been a normal jar of oil, but some people say it could have been like a small jar of anointing oil, which would naturally even smaller. Mm -hmm. But also the anointing oil has a little bit more value. Hence why she could, when she sold them, she would have so much more extra money. But it's just interesting too, because now she, it implies, okay, like you're, he told him, like, take your, first of all, I mean, the first thing, it's like the faith you have to do just in, in, not even just pouring out the oil yet, just gathering, just gathering these jugs. Because now you got to swallow your pride. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Because now it's like, you have to go to your friends, your family, strangers, asking them for jugs. New, and the first thing, why you want my jug? Mm -hmm. And so now you're having these uncomfortable conversations, if you care. <laughs> Because now you got to say, well, uh, you know, we've fallen on hard times, you know, the credit are coming, the man of God told us to get some jobs, not really sure what he wants to do with us, but we're just trusting him and we're trusting in God to perform a miracle for us and our family. You know, but you guys said it's probably the multiple people or some iteration of this story to get these jobs. Because the only people just willingly giving up their jobs. Like, right. I could put oil and water for that for myself. Mm -hmm. I'm just giving you my job. Yeah. I got a neighbor now who, <laughs> who let me, who, who bring me some food and they Tupperware. I would <laughs> not get they Tupperware back. Like, I keep telling them, yo, I about to get it. He said, oh, don't worry, but hold on, hold on to it. They're like, bro, why? I want to give you back your Tupperware, bro. You hey, tell you put that on their door. But you, no, but that, that ain't even, there's a second one. <laughs> and I said, I said, I said, it's the second one, bro. <laughs> like, the next time you take food from him, you just need to return the old one. No, I can pull up, I can pull up the EOS one day, but <laughs> I'll do it at bowls. Hey, go, bro. I've been meaning to get this box to you like normal, like I had to just forget, you see? Don't make it. Oh, like you've been plotting on this for months. Yeah, for real. Back to the back to the widow, right? So not even after that now. You have to get these jars in your house. They don't say how many, but we assume he said not just a few. So the players like gather a lot of jobs, as much as you could possibly get your hands on, as much as people are willing to give them to you. And now you say, hold now, now I think you you know you only have a little bit of oil. And now you're pouring them into these big jars. Just keep on pouring. Now you say, Black, hold on, I get all these jars. You telling me just keep on pouring this oil. Hmm. That alone takes that, uh, that's the second bout of fate. And you just pour in like, oh, one filled up. Okay, let's see. Keep mm -hmm. on pouring. Another one filled up. Okay. Another one filled up and another one and another one and another one. So much so that now you left with more oil than you started off. Well, I guess naturally started off. You, you, you <laughs> left with more oil. Sure. But your original one probably still full that you was using to pour out. And now you have all these other ones. And it was so funny too. And she was like, so I did it. What to do now? And he's like... Mm -hmm. Do I have to tell you everything? Right. I just imagine him saying, <laughs> especially when we get mad after last chapter. Like, I have to tell you everything, just go sell them. I thought this part was obvious. Like, <laughs> Elisha would have been way more humble than me. <laughs> it might have been a bigger play she thought he was trying to make. But it's funny though, from a sermon, I got to write a sermon because I got to preach in like two or three weeks. Mm -hmm. I'm preaching in a minute. But it's just so funny how the buyer is now the seller now. You understand mm -hmm. what they're saying? Like, and that's the power of God. Like, God can take you from being the person who buying oil to the person who now you selling oil. Like, mm -hmm. You know what I mean? That's that's interesting. That's mm -hmm. that's interesting. But let me, I want to ask you something. Go for it. I don't know if it's I don't know if there's something that I have an answer though, but in your opinion, you know, like how they say faith without works is dead. Mm -hmm. Do you believe that if she had no faith? This miracle would have still happened anyway. No. Like if, okay. Okay. And and I, I I only saying that because this principle we're gonna see later on in the chapter 
and I want to speculate. You know, no, I don't think. I mean, because here's the thing: <clears throat> it takes faith for the Galaxy the Jazz because Elijah never told again, even though I just made fun of it. Elijah never told them what the end plan was going to be. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Never told what the end plan was going to be. He say you need to do X, Y, and Z, and then like the first miracle that we talked about too, right? It took faith for the first widow to make Elijah J the food for food for him first before she made food for her uh, for her and her son. Very true. Because without without faith, nothing is possible. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like without faith, nothing is possible, and 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 that's true to this day. You know what I'm saying? You have to have faith in God. You have to have faith. Now God still okay. God still works miracles at His discretion. But I'll take. I'm talking about like you know the stuff where you're getting direction from God to go do things. You still yeah. takes faith to believe. Yeah, I think it's the practical ones. You know what I mean? Yeah. So like, so like, so like God could make a the garment wet in Gideon's perspective, and yeah. you know he 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 was very he was a big skeptic. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Right. But it's like God telling you to do this thing. You know what I'm saying? I don't know. It's interesting because I often question how much faith do you have if you don't have a mustard seed amount of faith. Like, like the metaphor, like the the thing that Jesus said about having mustard seed amount of faith, you can move mountains. Mm-hmm. I have, I've had a number of mustard seeds. I have one right now, and I look at it and I'm like, "Bro, you telling me I don't got? You telling me I don't got this much faith? You know, you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> like oh, man. My. But no, it's interesting. It's it's. It's definitely interesting because I don't know, like when 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 the disciples was trying to heal the the, the, the young man who, who used to throw himself in the fire and in the water, they couldn't do it. You understand what I said? They couldn't do it. And Jesus was kind of stern with them. He's like, bro, I got I got I gotta teach all everything, bro. And mm-hmm. then Jesus and then Jesus did it. You know, so it ain't that it couldn't be done. You know what I'm saying? But hell, we can see someone, uh, uh a widow who's, you know one of the former wives of the sons of the prophets, she have faith in God. So, you know, when the prophets say do something, especially someone with this reputation, you know, you ain't really going to have some doubts. So that's, that's it's good to see. And then like, I can't remember where it say, or if this is, or if this is Bible and not or biblical and not Bible. Right. But it's like, God rewards your faith. Hmm. I feel like it's Bible, but you know, I, <laughs> <laughs> we're still gonna do that segment at some point. But yeah, but like, I definitely think her faith was rewarded here. Mm. This is not her faith being rewarded. Like she did as the man of God did, as said and instructed her to do. Didn't have any questions, even when it didn't make sense. Mm. I think that's like kind of what faith is. Like it doesn't practically make sense, but I just trust in God to make something happen out of nothing. And the nothing is the faith. <laughs> yeah, definitely. And so we see. She not only had enough oil to to pay a debt, they had enough oil to not be in this predicament again. Mm-hmm. So it's like God doing above and beyond what you hope to ask for, exceeding mm-hmm. your expectations. You were just hoping to get out of debt. God say, hold on. I agree with your faith, whereas you don't even have to worry about debt. And if you manage your money properly, you should never be in this predicament again. You said. <laughs> You should be set. Go do do whatever you got to do with the extra money. You see, you know, you say live on the rest, hmm. and so that implies y'all have enough money to to make some good sound decisions on. I take that as that because you know when we thinking about it, she she's a a, a woman without a husband now. Mm-hmm. You know, the breadwinner, you know, assuming you know fair assumption, the breadwinner is no longer here. So how are you gonna you know make ends meet? You know. But now you have a stream of income, you know, that might be able to hold you, that should be probably hold, held, held you over until your sons become of age, you know, and, con- and can contribute to the like the household expenses and needs and stuff. But imagine you lend someone a job, eh? right? And they sell you your oil back and you won't eh? <laughs> <laughs> That's how I feel every time I buy Martin Salt, bro. I ain't gonna lie. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny too. Uh, anyway, we can go down a rabbit hole of uh, uh, economic stuff where people just <laughs> sometimes some people some people just get one over on you and you can't do nothing. <laughs> you can't no, do nothing not, about it, bro. You know what I'm saying? This all is ordained by God, so I ain't trying to like you know make yeah, no, that no, no, no. situation it, it, it at all. Like yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's just funny, like imagine, bro. Like, oh, it's Josh familiar. 
Yeah, it is <laughs> it just like a jar, but she might be like like them South people but bring your ball, <laughs> bring your jar. Bring your jar, I got oil. Uh, I ain't giving you I ain't got no jars to waste now. Bring your jar, I can get oil now. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my. So that was the first miracle in in 2 Kings chapter 4. And so now in verse 8, story change again. Now it happened one day when Elisha went to Shinim, where there was a notable woman, and she persuaded him to eat some food. So it was as often as he passed by, he would turn in there to eat some food. And she said to her husband, now look now, I know this is a holy man of God who passes by us regularly. Please let us make a small upper room on the wall and let us put a bed in there for him. And a table and a chair and a, lamp, and a lampstand. So it will be whenever he comes to us, he can turn in there. Such such a nice, such a nice godly woman trying to look out for the mind of God. Yeah, I was like, this is, this is a really nice hospitality. Because <laughs> I don't know how I would react. <laughs> like, why are we doing all this again? <laughs> Real talk. Oh my, but that's that, that's awesome. You see, she was she was a very caring woman. Saying the man hey. of God busy going to and fro. Go for it. Shunem is an Israelite place. I am not a hundred percent sure, but I can let no. you like Google it. No, I no, I Googled it, you know, and it said a village in Israel, right? Small village mentioned in the Bible in the possession of the tribe of Issachar. It was located near near See? the Jezreel Valley. I used to expect me to know. I used to know your name, Mr. Carr. <laughs> <laughs> no, because I just think about the Shunammites as not being. No, they couldn't have been. Because remember, Jesus used the Shunammite woman as as an example. He said, "Weren't there women, Israelite women, that could have been used?" But okay, so I get it. This is one of them things where the territory itself. Like, if you were native of this land, you don't have to be an Israelite because the Israelites came and conquered this land. And then certain lines just go back and forth. Mm-hmm. You know I'm saying between, between other tribes. It's like, where was the Jezreel Valley? They say this, they say Shunam is where the Philistines camped when they fought Saul, the, um, the first king of Israel. Mm-hmm. Very interesting. Interesting. Interesting, interesting, interesting. If anyone knows, hashtag Twigman, definitely comment <laughs> <laughs> comment below. <laughs> right. Um. So yeah, I mean, uh, how would you feel if your wife asked you to make a room for a pasta? I mean, if it's a pasta, I mean, understanding the situation, but I might be wrong because hold on, let me. I just want to backtrack just a little bit. Go for it. The woman who Elijah feed, oh, who fed Elijah, she wasn't a Shunammite. She was a Sidonian. Mm. I can't remember. I think I remember her and Jezebel being from the same place. I just Google it. Jezebel was of the Sidonians. These names is, is confuse me. You understand? Mm-hmm. And this, this is one of them things that would only pop up in my mind right now while we on air. You see what mm-hmm. I'm saying? So I can talk a little bit. I can answer your question. Hopefully you can find that out for me. You know what I mean? I got but, you. Right. So... See, the thing about it is, obviously, when someone else in your space, that's a big adjustment. You understand? Mm-hmm. I'm a person, I stay to myself. You know, I don't, but I don't even, but like, we supposed to probably have something one of these days, you know, but I I just ain't never been that person. I never been the host. Mm-hmm. I don't be in it. I, I barely used to be the people, the person who's drive to church and thing. You know what I mean? Like, I usually used to pass it, I just play the background. <laughs> And so, like, it would be an adjustment, but at the end of the day, I believe that I I take into consideration, you know, what God, you know, is calling me to do or to be. Oftentimes, I think about the text when Jesus say, you know, what you haven't done, what you've done to mm-hmm. the least of these, you have done unto me. Then he go on to say, I was in jail and you didn't visit me. Mercy. I was like, I was like, hold on. <laughs> I was like, wait, like how often, like we know they have ministries that go to prison, you know, that might mm-hmm. be like once a quarter thing, once a year, I think some churches, you know, you don't hear about them doing it. But how often uh, as uh, have we as just regular Christians gone to jail and visit people? Is it people that we visited that we knew or are we just visiting random people? Like, but that's what Jesus said. Like I was hungry. You didn't feel me. You know what I mean? I was naked. You didn't clothe me. These things easier to do when someone asks for money. Oh, yeah, yeah. You know, I know I do that because I know that's what God expects of me, you know, and that's the right thing to do. But mm-hmm. the, the sick, 
and uh, the jail thing. I like, man, that's so that's so interesting. I take a lot of initiative now. You know what I mean? Man, it's it's interesting too, right? And just like, oh, also the widow was from Zarephath. Zarephath. Oh man, I, I all over the place now. <laughs> <laughs> I all over the place. Now. Yeah, she was from Zarephath. So yeah. yeah um, I was gonna say a different story, but it ain't, it, ain't, it ain't as related as I thought in my head. And I played that, so I'm gonna just I'm gonna just swallow that point. Okay. Um. So yeah, it would be interesting. I mean, like again, I also think like the husband knows his wife, and then he also probably knows his amount of God too. So ain't no, ain't no um, animosity there. And then so now in verse eleven, it happened one day that he came there, he being Elijah, and he turned into the upper room, and to lay down there. Then he said to Gehazi, his servant, call the Shittimite woman. When he, when he had called her, he stood before him and he said to him, say, say, now, say now to her, look, you have been concerned with us with all this care. What can I do for you? Do you want me to speak on your behalf to the king and, or to the commander of the army? She answered, I dwell among my own people. So he said, what then is is to be done for her? And Gehazi answered, actually, she has no son and her husband is old. <laughs> Gehazi seems so, so straightforward. But... Yeah, so, all right. So Zarephath, if you Google it, they can say it's south of Sidon. Um, the text, when they mentioned the Zarephath woman in 1 first, first Kings 17, verse 9, it say, get thee to Zarephath, which belongeth mm-hmm. to Sidon, and okay, there. Okay, so okay. same same region. That's what that was the confusion. This Shuna white woman, she just she just got associated because it was a similar story. This way I get confused or whatever, but yeah. Just mm-hmm. just for clarity. <clears throat> okay, okay. Yeah, but back to Gahazi. Gahazi. Yeah, so he's, 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 straightforward though. Gahazi said, yeah. well, you know, and we we can notice this about Gahazi. See, I don't want to spoil too much about Gahazi because you really tell me if I give away too much, I can be I can be spoiling this chapter, right? But Gahazi, I don't, I don't like how his name. I don't like how his name sounds so close to mine, bro. That's what this part of me, bro. Gahazi, if you say it fast enough, it sounds like you're saying Gahazi. You know what I mean? <laughs> you do. You do. And you I do. and I noticed that when I was reading it, I was like Gahazi. You know what I mean? Like, oh man, I don't like that, but you know it is what it is. <laughs> Gahazi, little straightforward. I want to know him and. How him and Elisha get get? Yeah, because we don't have, we never <laughs> we never know when Eli when Elisha pick him up. You know, yeah, and, we you don't know, get the just, origin he, story. He just appeared this episode. We had a whole introduction of Elisha and Elijah. Gahazi, <laughs> you're like, oh, Elisha has a servant. Okay. Gahazi, <laughs> oh, okay, Gahazi, okay, okay, where Gahazi come from? Hmm. And he just come with the blue. Yeah, she has no son, and her husband is old. So hmm. he said, call her when he called her. She stood in the doorway. Then he said, about this time next year, you shall embrace a son. And she said, no, my Lord, man of God, don't lie to your maidservant. Yeah, please. If this was in Genesis, one could argue she laughed. <laughs> yeah, she laughed. But she was just like, but don't even... Don't, don't even, even play with me. Yeah, you don't play like that, bro. You don't, don't play with serious stuff like don't that. Don't sell me this dream. Yeah, I uh-uh. Uh-uh. Don't sell me this dream. And it's... It really it's interesting. I we had a conversation last week about like the theme of women just not having children in the Bible and where it's we could we could talk about it in a different episode mm-hmm. or a different type of podcast style, right? But it's like what's just knowing that context and you start seeing some of these things, it just like makes more sense as to why and why the Bible has so much emphasis on like God helping people conceive. Mm-hmm. But we see her, she's saying, yo, don't like, because again, I mean, I think, especially if you're married, it's probably like, for most women, I don't want to speak for every woman. I shouldn't even open this can of worse, but like a lot of women want to conceive a child. You know what I'm saying? Especially how you could see like, part of this is like, man, I probably got my hopes up so much in the past and it didn't happen. And now even in my husband's old age, you're saying that I'm going to have a child now, like, don't even dingle this jar of hope in front of me if I've already closed that door. Yeah, bro. But outside of outside of just people wanting kids, right? Think about the stakes which she up against, bro. This woman, if she's not old, 
right? Let's say, let's say, let's say she's not old because they don't say if she's old or not. I don't think they mentioned that here, but we know her husband old. Mm -hmm. I mean, the prospect of him passing away is increased because he's getting old. If when he passed, you don't got no son. Now you don't have no heritage. Like you mm -hmm. don't have, you lose all your status in the way you live. You lose all your bargaining chips, everything. You that's 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 culturally how women were viewed back then, or, or widows were viewed back then. You mm -hmm. know your status. You are incomplete. You know what I'm saying. And that's why. Um, that's why. That's why Elijah. Um, Elisha at the beginning of this chapter, you know, he, he she come to she come to him for help because she like, bro, I just lost my husband and all my sons are young and we have this debt. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? They probably had this debt even when the husband was alive, but he probably was working it off or he could have made money and make ends meet. But now you have young, you have young sons, you a widow, you don't got no say, bro. We taking your children as labor. You know what I'm saying? We only we ain't got the same type of um operation that we had earlier where your husband probably was just paying as mm -hmm. he could no 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 no. so like it's a from an authoritative standpoint like you don't be, this culture it's like you you needed you needed a complete unit which a uh, heir like a son to continue mm -hmm. the name was was a part of that unit excuse me yeah most definitely but in god's immaculate power yeah. In verse 17, the woman conceived and bore a son when the appointed time had come, of which Elijah told her. And the child grew. Now it happened one day that he went out to his father to the reapers, and he said to his father, Father, my head, my head. So he said to serve and carry him to his mother, in typical father fashion. <laughs> When he had taken him and brought him to his mother, he sat on her knees until noon. Then he died. Then she went up and laid him on the bed of the man of God, shut the door upon him and went out. Then she said to her husband, and she called her husband and said, please send one of the young men and, and one of the donkeys that I, may that I may run to the man of God and come back. So he said, why are you going to him today? It is neither a new moon nor, nor the Sabbath. But she said, it is well. And I think in the King James, he said it is going to be well. I'm not 100% sure. I know some translations say it's going to be well, and this translation says it is well. Um, but she said it is well, which again, to me, implies faith. But I'm going to just keep going a little bit, and we could discuss. Mm -hmm. Then he sat, then she sat on the donkey and said to her servant, drive and go forward. Do not slacken the pace until I tell you. And so she departed and went to the man of God at Mount Carmel. Got it, or you know what? What what verse it was? That was verse twenty four, uh, twenty three, right before twenty four. Twenty three, and he said, "Wherefore will thou go to him today? It is neither new born nor Sabbath." And he said, "It." Okay, it says it, and then in italics says shall be, and then well, and italics mean that that was added in translation. So, the uh, the, the the Hebrew word translates to it well. You understand what I'm saying? So it can be it is well. Or, or but they put it shall be well, you know. The words of my good friend, it's okay, it's okay, it's okay. So, a couple of interesting things here, right? So, the child, the promised son, died, died, mm -hmm. and now in distress. Well, I don't even know if it's, just, it's distress, right? The woman of God said, Well, oh, woman of God. <laughs> The, the Shunammite woman said, okay, here's what we're going to do. I'll put him in the man of God's bed. Those who don't even going to tell anyone what happened, but I'm going to go to the man of God. You know what I'm saying? Uh, what I found most striking is that what she told her husband. She didn't tell her husband, oh, the child is sick in bed. She didn't, tell her, she didn't even tell her husband the child died. She just said, it is well. Mm. It is well. And to me, that statement alone just embodies the faith because mm -hmm. she knows what she's about to do. She, she, know what, she knows what she's about to request, right? And the funny thing about it is, I don't know how popular the story of Elijah bringing the young man back from life is at this point. So I literally can't have no way of quantifying that. But I'm thinking 
it's not that well known, mm. really and truly. And that was in a completely different city, but oh, might have been the same city. Either way, to know what you're about to ask and to have the faith that it can be done, to me, like that's that's just that's just powerful. Yeah, like, I, I don't know where Seraphath is in in you know. You know, we, it, it, I don't think it's, it's that relevant. I don't know how close it is to, to Shunam, mm-hmm. where we are. You know, you know what I'm saying? But I will in the, I will in the bet that it ain't that well known only because that did happen in a non-Israelite nation. Side on. You understand what I'm saying? This is Israelite territory. These are, I think they are Israelites. You know, the tribe of, you know, Issachar. Issachar. They, they obviously know about the Sabbath. They know about the new moon. Israelites, you understand what I'm saying? However, Elijah, I do not strike him as being someone who, you know, someone inconspicuous. You know, people probably knew him. He went out in <laughs> in a very high fashion, you know. Mm-hmm. And, and, you know, if you are enemy of the king, I think you should be well known. Mm-hmm. And regardless of the fact, this woman has the faith that regard no matter the current circumstance what it look like, you know, her faith, her faith in God is that regardless of what I have, you know, I know what God can make of this. So mm-hmm. it is well. And that's I think that is very powerful because like even me this morning, I step on the scale. This is just enough this ain't nearly as close to this, but I step on the scale. And bro, I've been hustling, bro, especially like the last two weeks. Mm-hmm. I've been working hard, bro. And I really been forcing myself to stay on track with my diet. You understand what I'm saying? However, the scale has not been moving. The scale has not been moving. The only thing I, I probably slack on is sleep pattern, you know. But, and that might be the reason, but I'm mm-hmm. looking at it and I'm like, bro, I track myself to lose two pounds a week. That's a very intense but sustainable metric. I've done it before multiple times. But but the past three weeks, I only lost like one pound, Right. So now I short five pounds and I like, bro, if this continue, the variance is just going to keep building. Now, mind mm-hmm. you, I might be, I might be looking better. And I, it might be actually dropping off me, but the scale might not reflect because there's so many, so much stuff that goes on with the body. Right. Mm-hmm. But I just get so frustrated because I like, bro, this, 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 um, this ruining my, oh, I don't even know what to say, but like this ruining my ambition right now, but like, like this making me feel like, it makes me feel like giving up. Like I, I know I don't, I'm not gonna give up because I, I, I have goals that I want to achieve. But it's like it really was killing me. But I just stopped and thought to myself, bro, faith is the evidence of things unseen. Mm-hmm. So even though I look at myself in the mirror, I see myself every day. So I don't really notice a change unless I compare pictures and videos. And week to week, you don't really see that much, that much progress, right? But just because I don't see it, that don't mean it's not there. So because I know what I'm doing is right, I have to continue moving. Even though I don't see it, bro, I have to continue doing everything right Mm -hmm. because eventually it'll come to fruition. I will get the evidence that I want. But if like, like the stage, if I, if I don't perform, if I stop dieting, I definitely ain't gonna see the results that I want to. You understand mm-hmm. what I'm saying? That's, that's a, I, 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 bro, never in a million years, I thought that, that would have been a life or, or, or like a spiritual lesson. A lesson for you. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Like for real, bro. But yeah, bro, like it was discouraging to see, to see the situation that I, that I was in. I'm like, bro, I do everything. I do everything right, bro. Like when, when you, when you this early in your weight loss journey, you're supposed to be fat, you're supposed to be dropping off, off of you. It ain't until you get further down, you're doing this for a while and um, you lose a significant amount of weight that you tend to plateau mm-hmm. because your body like, no, you need to change stuff. But I early, I early, I weigh I too heavy for this to be working me so hard. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, but, um, but I had to just tell myself, bro, you know what you're doing is right. So you just got to push through, bro. Whatever the situation is, it can correct itself eventually. So this lady look at her situation. She say, bro, I do everything right. You know, I was hospitable to the man of God. She probably was, was you know, faithful to God. You know, she obviously had a lot of faith in God. So mm-hmm. she see the situation when she was in. And she like, bro, I noticed him because of, of me locking something or me doing something wrong. So I don't have no choice but to trust that it will be well. The evidence of things I'm seeing. I can't see that it'll be well. But I have faith that it'll be well. 
And you know? then I, I also like the next definition that's also in that same chapter where it says like faith is the substance of things mm-hmm. hoped for, bro. Yeah, it's like definitely. I'm, I hope my child come back to life. Yeah, I don't, really. You know what I'm saying? I'm hoping my child come back. I'm, I'm hoping I go into this man of God and he can and he can help and he and he knows how to get it done. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? Like I I hope and I'm working on my hope on this. The faith is what faith is the substance of the things that you hope for, which is still crazy. Like. Mm-hmm. Like oh my! Like it, it like both. That's a that's such a deep phrase, bro. Like it, it, like I still don't think I understand the full magnitude of what that that text is, bro. The Hebrews substance, eleven verse one for people. <laughs> substance of things that you it's hope the, for. The so the substance, bro. So the substance of something that has not happened yet. Exactly, right? bro. But it is also the evidence of it's, something that you cannot, cannot see. see. Oh man, <laughs> that's that's yeah, that's bro. wonderful. <laughs> It's so crazy, right? It is like now you see why faith, why why requires faith to make it to heaven in so many different ways, bro. Like it requires faith in Jesus because, right? Granted, us, especially us, we can't see him, Mm -hmm. we can't touch him, and then heaven, this place where we want to make it to, we want to spend eternity with God, bro. What is it? You know what I'm saying? Like it's 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 the evidence of the things we can't see. It's the and it's the substance of the things we hope for. Quite literally, it is the literal substance of the things we're hoping for right. you know what i'm saying it's 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 faith is a serious thing yeah and you know without faith it's impossible to please god so that's like intertwined into mm-hmm. the fabric of our you know salvation and you know our obedience and our relationship with god like that's a key point mm-hmm. we see that the shooter my woman definitely had that this is a determined woman i respect her it is well it, it is well, well. It is well. It is. Be the chop, that should be the a thing for this episode. Yeah, hey, I right. can say it, right? But we gotta do that fate episode, right? But I say it though. <laughs> no, you won't say it. Don't say it. Don't say it. <laughs> I say it. But um now we see in verse 20. Uh, I just go back from uh 24. Uh, yeah, I was midway through 25. So she departed and went to the mind of God at Mount Carmel. So it was when the man of God saw how far off that he said to Gehazi, his servant, look, the Sudamite woman, please go run now to meet her and say to her, is it well with you? Is it well with your husband? Is it well with the child? Mm. It's so interesting that these, the words you, this is a, the phraseology that you want to go with. Right. Now, I don't know what the phraseology was in Hebrew. So forgive me, this is definitely the English translation of it, but it's just so interesting that you just said it as well. Mm-hmm. And now you have an opportunity to, again, say what's happening. Mm. To Gahasi, she said, and she asked it as well. And so we see, like, I don't know if it's just because she didn't want to tell Gahasi what's happening. You know, you already know my thoughts on Gahasi, but I, I, I can keep them reserved, right? Yeah. <laughs> um, if she just didn't want to tell him, if she wanted like what the actual thing to come from her lips specifically, not hundred percent sure. Right. But then we see now in verse 27, now when she came to the mount of God at the hill, she caught him by the feet, but Gehazi came there to push her away. What's going on with this Gehazi guy, bro? <laughs> I see you call him Gehazi now. Yeah, you don't yeah, even, yeah. You don't even no. want to try and mix it up. <laughs> no, you, you, you gotta get, we got to disassociate him from my name. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my. But the man of God said, let her alone, for her soul is deep in distress, and the Lord has hidden it from me and has and has not told me. And to me, that's so interesting, too. Mm. Right. Because instantly when I don't know if the Lord revealed that to him, Elisha, when she came to him then, right? But instantly Elijah said, No, something is wrong. Mm. But then he instantly say, Oh, something seriously happened. Mm. But the Lord didn't even reveal it to me before time. Mm. And this is the matter of God. And it's not even said he wasn't close to God right now, but sometimes God lets things happen. To one teaches a lesson so his glory could be so his glory can be known. I ain't saying it in the right phraseology, but kind of understand what I'm saying. You know what I'm saying? So again, he didn't I think he didn't show Elijah because he didn't need Elijah to go there to mucky up the waters, as in, you know, prevent this from happening before time. Mm -hmm. And if he did, we might have we might have never had this story to begin with. You know what I'm saying? 
But now this story, what she went through is a lesson for us today now that it actually got let it run its course. Now she teaches the lesson of, you know, faith, this story that probably many sermons have been preached off of. Many souls probably got one to Christ, but it's like for that reason. Mm-hmm. And it even goes back to our initial conversation on the thing, like what is faith? I mean, what is fail? But the real question she asks, what is righteous and what is not? And the only person who could answer that true question is God. Mm-hmm. Because ultimately, God understands what is righteous. And God's righteousness might not seem fair to us. Mm-hmm. And that's something that we a humans we have a, we have a hard time rationalizing rationalizing. Yeah, you know I, what I'm saying? I think I think it ain't even worth trying to rationalize. I mean, you could try, but just just you just gotta be you you have to be willing to accept that you ain't gonna come to the resolve that you you anticipating, bro. Because that mm-hmm. fairness, bro. It's like what we was talking about with the vineyard, bro. If you know, if the owner of the vineyard say, "I could pay you a day's wages," mm-hmm. right? I could pay you a day's wages to work here from nine to five. You say yes. That's fair. That's a fair exchange. And then the person come in at four p.m. and you say, "I could pay them a day's wages mm-hmm. to work." Now you've been breaking your back from nine to five, bro. <laughs> you take a thirty minute break. You see what I saying? You working? This old person come. One hour, like I mean, you know, respect, respect to the elderly, but that ain't that ain't fair. Mm-hmm. If you pay them, let's say, let's say the going rate, let's say it's four, let's say it's four hundred dollars a day, something, something solid, right? Four hundred a day. You give someone four hundred an hour. Mm. So now, to me, I think my stock's rising. I said, oh, I must see, <laughs> I must see, didn't hear him good. He probably <laughs> say four hundred an hour. You feel me? And so now, when he say, he give you your 400, you're looking at him like, hold on, buddy. Hold on, buddy. Hold on, buddy. Just, give, <laughs> just give him $400. I don't, I don't, that don't make sense. And then he'll turn around and say, but you, didn't you agree? The 400? Mm-hmm. Uh, he's negotiating. You say, okay, you, that was solid to you before, <laughs> right? You know what I mean? And, I, and it's like, all right, you could have someone who was righteous their whole life, go to heaven. Someone who was righteous the last day of their life, go to heaven, get the same reward. What is fail? You know mm. what I mean? Like, like from a human perspective, bro, I don't think we can wrap our minds around it. That's why God in his infinite wisdom, he make make these decisions, you know? Indeed. Indeed. Yeah. And so now we see, right? Uh, verse 28, verse I think. Verse 28. So she said, did I ask? <laughs> did I ask for his son, my Lord? I'd ask for this. You tell me this. <laughs> Gahazi running him out and say, I ain't had no son. And you just come and offer this son to me. <laughs> Unprovoked. <laughs> Unprovoked. <laughs> Did I not say, do not deceive me? And she goes, hey, hey, hey I, I, I tell you, they're just asking questions. <laughs> like, and, and I ain't lying either. These hey, are my exact words. Hey, hey, you know, I just... I just replay in the events in my mind. And I just want to know if I get it wrong. Right. Did right, I ask I, for this? I, you know when you ask them because you know you got all the bargaining chips? Yeah. Hold on, I might be wrong. I, 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 I might, might be, be wrong. Looking, yeah. Tell, tell, tell me if I'm wrong. Tell, yeah, tell, tell me if I'm wrong. wrong. <laughs> <laughs> That's oh, my. Then, then he said to Ghazi, get yourself ready and take my staff in your hand and be on your way. If you meet anyone, do not greet him. And if anyone greets you, do not answer him, but lay my staff on the face of the child. And the mother of the child said, as the Lord lives and as your soul lives, I will not leave you. So he arose and followed her. Now Gehazi went ahead of them and laid the staff on the face of the child. But there was neither voice, there was neither voice nor hearing. Therefore, he went back to meet them and told them, saying, the child is not awakened. Mm -hmm. So now I have a question for you. Mm-hmm. What are your thoughts on like the mother not leaving Elijah's side? Bro, you know what I was thinking about? Mm-hmm. When, when Jairus' daughter, Jairus or however you mm-hmm. pronounce his name, when he needed to get here, because my wife preached a sermon on this, and, and it really helped me to understand it a little bit. When he needed Jesus to heal his daughter, Jesus walked through the crowd, and the woman mm-hmm. that issued with blood touched him. And Jesus stopped what he was doing and turned around and said, you touch me, right? And I just think about how much anxiety would have been going through. Because I already, as an impatient person, when 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 I in high stress situation, like, <laughs> I ready to go, bro. Like, you know what I mean? Like, so if someone dying, 
I, now I have a, I have a, I have a reason to be auntie. Mm -hmm. But I like Jesus. We gotta go. My daughter about to die. Bro. What happened? In but you stopping an Arsenal awesome touch you? Come on, bro. You walking mm -hmm. to a crowd where people can touch you. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And so now this, just like the same situation. Your child has died. However. You're very anxious because this is your last chance at something in probably in your mind. So you 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 get to talk, you rush in. This servant of yours gone for it. But I know who I come in to talk to. I come to ask the man of God. I have a personal experience with this man of God. Number one, I know you as a man of God. Your reputation precedes you. And I chose to be hospitable to you because that was the right thing to do. Mm -hmm. You in turn. Bless me with a son. With with you, you bless me with the news from God that I would receive a son. That was solid on your part. I have a rapport with you. I your reputation precedes you, but I have experienced. I have seen how you were a liaison for a miracle myself. Right, mm -hmm. we come into God's eye. Who done trying to push me off? Remember, like you say, she God's eye asks if everything cool. He going through the list. He say if everything cool with your people, with your, with mm -hmm. your child. She say yeah, everything cool. Right? That's like when you're having a bad day and someone who you don't, do not want to confide in asks you if everything good. How are you feeling? I'm okay. I don't feel like elaborating to you. Now, if I talk to my, my mom or my sibling or my spouse or even my therapist, I ain't going to say everything cool because everything ain't cool with me. But that's your answer I give to you because stay on my business. But mm -hmm. <laughs> as I, she ain't give him the full. She dropped down to his knees, to, to his feet. And God's I trying to push her off. Her and Gehazi ain't on the same accord and Gehazi ain't reading the room neither. He ain't understanding the severity of the situation that I'm in. Mm -hmm. And Elijah catch on. He said, but no, hold on now, bro. This ain't someone being a fan. This ain't someone causing me harm, you know. This person is in, in, grave, in grave distress. And even God ain't even show me that, but I could see you in distress, right? Mm -hmm. And so now he's saying Gehazi, he give Gehazi strict instructions, but I think, I think the respect that she have for Elisha. It's like, bro, dog, I, I can go to the place and who I know for sure is the professional here. You understand so, what I'm saying? So now let me give some little pushback on this, right? Mm -hmm. Right? Also using examples from the New Testament, right? Mm -hmm. You use Jarius' daughter. I use Roman Centurion. Okay. Roman Centurion say, bro, I don't even need you to come. Just mm -hmm, say the word. True. That's true. Right? So now my thing is, did a faith just get weakened and thinking the power came from Elisha and not God? Because you know, Elisha, because my thing is, oh, like, because my thing mm -hmm. is like Elisha, if a faith was still a hundred percent solid, granted, this is just speculation, we just pushing back, right? Mm -hmm. The man of God sent his servant. Because the power, he know the power will come from him. Mm -hmm. The power really working through your faith. If you know your son could be healed through my instructions through God. It shouldn't matter who go. Because we all know the power still ain't really come from Elijah at the end of the day. That's Fox. And so Elijah said, go. And she's like, bro, I don't care what you do. I want you to come. Right. Because I think in you as a miracle worker, not Gahazi. Right? So I'm like, is it just, it's just, it's just, just a matter of, of faith that just kind of dwindled in, in misplaced, in misplaced, like, understanding of how it works. Because yeah. Jared's like, yo, Jesus, come. Roman Centurion was like, bro. I know how this go. I don't even need you to, I ain't even gonna bother you. Just mm -hmm. say the word. Mm -hmm. Where is she? It's like, bro, no, Elijah, I want you to come. Ghazi, go for it. So, so the thing about it is, right, with the Roman centurion, I feel like, oh, I wish I had a good analogy. But, you know, like how sometimes you ask for the best option, but you you just was completely unaware that there was a better option that I could have get. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I think I think the Roman centurion because his line of work and his because the, because of the fact that he was a, an authoritative figure, he looked at it through the eyes of an authoritative figure. This person, this is the big boss, and so if me, little boss, I could do these things. I know the big boss could do that. I don't have to think about that, right? Mm -hmm. However, we just don't know if Jairus even knew that he could have had a, a remote. You know what I mean? <laughs> just, just do it. You know what I mean? Whatever, but they pro to your point, they probably wouldn't have that type of faith to even trust that. No, 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 I need you to come. Because I think about me, I think I would have want Jesus. No, 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 come. You see what I said? <laughs> Same thing with the prophet. No, 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 you come. You see what I said? <laughs> but it's only one other variable within this. Mm. It's Kahazai. Because we know that God is performing this miracle, right? Mm -hmm. But Elisha say, 
Don't stop and talk to no one, mm -hmm. right? But if God performing a miracle and he stop and talk to someone, you know what I mean? He would he would jeopardize the miracle because it's like it's still it's still the vessel it's still the vessel in See, place. When, I wasn't even going to try again on Gahasa. I was going to let him slide. I, 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 I only talk. I only talk about what Elisha say. You know what I mean? But I feel you. I feel you though. I feel you. And so my my my, I do agree that there is a strong possibility that her faith in God was only limited to the vessel to the proven vessel. Whom he use, right? I mean, and, yeah, go, go finish your point. However, she might have just not trust Gahazai. And to your point, her distrust for Gahazai could have outweighed her trust for God. Yeah, I mean, granted, none of us know exactly the true situation. It's just me providing a counter argument to what could have been happening. Because, mm -hmm. I mean, it, us as humans, we get attached to where we think we misplace the source of the power. Just put it that way. Like a lot of people, how you say this without making sound like I said, Ethan. I have a friend. Go for it. Some people confuse the shoot source. Me, shoot me my I video. know, I got you, I got you. <laughs> I have a friend who once who once told me some people confuse source with resource. Mm. You understand what I'm saying? Elisha is a resource, mm -hmm. but he's not the source. Amen. You understand Good. what I'm saying? That's a perfect I got example. I got That's you. a perfect example. I got, I got you. <laughs> That's a perfect example. Because I said it in my head. I said, boy, I can't this say is, this. See again. This, this could come out too wrong. <laughs> yeah, man. Oh, that was a good one. Yeah. Because he said, y'all can, can tweet that, stream that, post that on your status. That's a good one right there. Yeah, that's a good one right there. Boy, I start sweating all, taking off. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, I hate that. I hate I hate when you when you back yourself into a corner, bro. <laughs> oh my. So now we see Gahazai said the child is not awakened. So in verse 32, when Elisha came to the house, there was the child laying on laying dead and hit on, on his bed. He went therefore, shut the door behind him, the two of them, and prayed to the Lord. He went up and laid on the child, put his mouth on the child's mouth, his eyes on his eyes, his hand on his hands, and he stretched himself out on the child, and the flesh became warm. Mm. He returned and walked back and forth in the house, and again went up and stretched himself out on him. Then the child sneezed seven times and opened his eyes. And then he called Gehazi and said, Call the Shunammite woman. So he called her, and when she came to when she came into him, he said, Pick up your son. So she went, fell at his feet and bowed to the ground. Then she picked up her son and went out. I see. I, I was, for some reason, I was wondering why his head was hurting. Like what, like what ailment? But you never know. We would never know. And because a lot of people now is deal with. Like migraine and stuff like that, right? No, terrifying like migraines and have all kinds of different. Like, cancer, so. Yeah. So it, it, you just never know, man. You never know. So crazy, bro. So crazy. So we got about like eight more verses. Mm -hmm. Two different stories. Let's go. So Elisha turned, returned to Gilgal, and there was a farmer in the line. Now the sons of the prophets were sitting before him, and he said to his servant, put on, put on the large pot and boil the stew for the sons of prophets. So one went out into the field and gathered some herbs and found a wild vine and gathered from it a lap full of wild gourds, and came and sliced them into the pot of stew. Though they did not know, though they did not know what they were. Then they served it to the man to eat. Now it happened, as they were eating the stew, that they cried out and said, Man of God, there is death in the pot, and they could not eat it. And he went, and then he said, Bring then bring some flour, and he put it into the pot and said, serve it to the people that they may eat. And there was nothing harmful in the pot. And then story number two. Then the man of God came from Bil Shalashia hmm. and bought the man of God bread of the first fruits, 20 loaves of barley and bread, bread of the first fruits, 20 loaves of barley bread and newly ripened green in his knapsack and said, give it to the people that they may eat. But a serpent said, what shall, what, sh what shall I set this before 100 men? 
He said again, give it to the people that they may eat. But thus says the Lord, they shall eat and have some left over. So he sat it before them and they ate and had some left over according to the word of God. I wonder how much people that was. Well, they say a hundred. But oh, you don't know how much like other children and stuff, because usually, be, you mm-hmm. know, they say they just count the men mm-hmm. in these instances. But at minimum, a hundred. Mm-hmm. So you think of these last two um, quick stories. Well, I think, I think the Bible, well, first of all, many things in the Bible, which I just don't understand the full relevance of, but... Mm-hmm. In a general and a high level perspective, I think this the author of Kings is doing a good job of showing us the double portion. I was thinking the same thing in this chapter because it's just a bam, 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 fall. Miracle, 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 miracle. You understand it, what I'm saying? Even if you don't come with them, you feel like, man, last year doing a lot, you know. <laughs> You're doing a lot, but but you can see like all of these things, just miraculous things that, that, mm-hmm. that Elijah's doing. And with Elijah, we had miracles but we also had pockets of him running and at at, at, at odds with the mm-hmm. king of israel and stuff like that so it's like it balanced so far we just really just getting a lot of elijah just being on his job like his day-to-day duty prophet man of god intervening you know praying over the dead you know stuff like that like elijah really really working and so you can see from a documentation standpoint, he on path to actually do do more miraculous things than than that of Elijah, his predecessor. Predecessor, I know the word. <laughs> predecessor. predecessor, yeah, predecessor, predecessor. Yeah, I mean, like, go for if you get oh, some huh? no, I was saying, like, overall, it's just interesting now because we have four different stories, four different implications, but. It's showing the miraculous worth of God. And in the, the first two shows more instances of faith. And then the second two more show how God can use Elijah to do some great things. And it's funny how like the feeding of the 100 men, something I completely forgot until I read Kings, Second Kings the first time. Because every time you think about multiple people getting fed, we just think of Jesus feeding the 5,000, being like 4,000. Yeah, it was like it was two, two times she used to feed multiple people, and people mm-hmm. even forget that because they just remember it as one story. Mm-hmm. But we see Elijah doing it on a smaller scale here, but it was done before. Mm. It's definitely done before, and also showing yeah. Jesus fulfilling prophets in multiple different ways. He been coming back to want some of the same miracles they did. Um, it's just interesting too that we see like two instances too where like Elijah Shah is conquering death in a different way than Elijah. I mean, Elijah went up to heaven. We know that a miraculous, a miraculous grand entry into heaven. I don't think anyone else can get the, the, the flame and chariot treatment. That was a one and done thing, real VIP. Mm-hmm. But typically we think of death being the end all be all for us here on earth in this stage, right? But we see like this two like this instance here where Elijah was like, "All right, cool. I'm going to do the work of God. Bring your son back to back to life and showing life conquering death." And then there was this pot of stew where they ate a wild vine, which and you know your mommy always tell you don't eat anything that you ain't too sure of off a tree because mm-hmm. it could be poisonous. Mm-hmm. And they were supposed to die, but then again, God was like, "Okay, the Elijah, y'all, we just gonna have." We just gonna have a miraculous way to bring this pot back to life and putting flour in it ain't, wasn't gonna do nothing but it just shows an act of their faith to believe that what elijah was gonna do was gonna make the pot heal well i guess unpoisonous it's funny mm-hmm. because this there's actually a poison vine that looks like a wild cucumber that still grows around that you reach it the day that if you eat it in large quantities it actually could kill you so this might have been one of the same things they ate back in the day too but it's just really interesting, like showing God's miraculous works through multiple different stories in multiple different instances where people still have to have faith. And even Elisha himself, like even the last one, which seems to be like a or like a, a throwaway miracle. I shouldn't say throwaway miracle. But I mean, like, you know, you just have to, you know, just have the other three. It's like, oh, you feed like a hundred men, but that still takes faith. Like you look at this 20 loaves 
some some green and like some from barefoot the first from the first fruits and saying, okay, yeah, I'm gonna have this feed over a hundred people and knowing that it's going to do it, just having the faith that it can do it as well. Like I think that's I think that's impactful. Yeah, definitely impossible. It's a lot of bread. <laughs> a lot of bread. I just be thinking of sometimes like what a protein trip. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, My Jesus, boys, at least Jesus gave people fish. He gave you some fish or that. that. <laughs> you know what I mean? But yeah, definitely. Um it, it, it's just so interesting because it's like with some of the stories with Elijah, you get narrative. You understand mm-hmm. what I'm saying, and, and I, I I get I get your point to where you call it a quote unquote throw throw it, but I know you I know what you meant. Like these things is just in and out. It's just in like hey, <laughs> it's like hey, there's a bunch of there's a bunch of people they didn't have enough food, you know. Elijah spread it, and there was more left over. Boom, they just giving you the, the summary and then no know, build up, no build up. Like because because think about it, they have this poisonous gourd. This poisonous vine or fruit of some sort, but they gotta cook this thing, bro. They gotta pick it and say, but oh, I know you know. Anyway, they put it in the pot and they cook it. They, they make a whole stew. <laughs> Did I say anything like they just pick it and eat it? You know what I mean? They make a whole stew. So time, time went by. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And then someone must see walk by and say, but you, but you can't eat this. Or someone eat it and they start to like you know feel the effects. You know what I mean? But you know they just the author is just you know, being just intentional about listing some of these miracles. Like, I, I don't, like, we don't have to get into all, everything. You know, it might not be mm-hmm. much of a story beyond the miracle, but just know, just know on a regular day, just for lunchtime, <laughs> Elijah, Elijah good for, he good for he a good miracle. For a miracle. <laughs> <laughs> if you need a miracle, come, and Jesus is not available. <laughs> Elijah <laughs> got you. It's like the man of God. The man of God. He was knocking him out. So you had a lot on this plane. <laughs> I know. So, but I, I do think it is powerful. Mm-hmm. This lady who keeps saying it is well, you know, mm-hmm. where does she say it is well to um throw you off in Gahazi case? Or where does she saying it is well to buy time? But at the end of the day, it has to be some type of wellness or some type of belief or faith. It has some type of positive thinking. And here for her to say that because she could have been like, no, it ain't well. I got to go talk to Elijah. I got to go cry or I got to go express my grievance, bro. Like, I got to give her mm-hmm. a piece of my mind because obviously she felt some type of way about it. But just the attitude, she, attitude, man. Like, it, it, it's so hard to, it's so hard to remain positive when you're in such a intense situation, especially something, something like, like life or death. You know what I'm saying? Like, you see in the silver lining in it all, and I, I personally believe. You know, people say life and death is in the power of the tongue. And it's in the tongue, right? I, but I do personally believe, bro, you will live a higher quality of life or a less stressful or less anxious life if you could learn to be positive in every situation that you could. See, negativity it just gets you antsy, and sometimes it it leads you to react in certain way. You might be, but you might be so stressed out, bro. Somebody say something simple to you, and you snap on them. Then they just was the straw to break the camel back. You know what I mean? They just get caught in the crossfire. You know what I mean? And it ain't fair to them, <laughs> but it is hard to do that. Like it's it's hard to keep all these burdens on top of us. But same time, it's like your attitude, kid. Your attitude could help you, or your attitude could like forfeit you from from certain blessings. When we think about Samson's father Manoah, Manoah, the, the angel was telling him they was about to have a son. Mm-hmm. Manoah asking so much question, he's like, "Bro, don't worry, bro. Let me just talk to your wife, bro, because she she understand it. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. when we think about Zachariah, Zachariah in the New Testament, um, Elizabeth husband John the Baptist's father." The angel coming to him, telling him he about to have a, a child. Now, mind you, he is very old, so you know the likelihood of, of it. But this man is a priest. The angel say, "Bro, all right, bro, you 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 slapping up too much. You ain't gonna be able to talk and tell your son is born. So now you gotta wait nine months to be able to talk. It's like certain certain consequences that come with just having a lack of faith or just like your attitude. You know, a secular quote: your attitude determines your altitude. Mm-hmm. That's the truth." That's the truth. The Bible says a soft answer turn it away, Ross. But like you could be in a high, a high and high stressful um, situation. 
something that's very hectic. But it is best for you to keep calm, you know, and to just have faith in God. Faith in God. Elisha is showing that he has a double portion of the Holy Spirit. He has performed several miracles in this chapter, and they have all been a blessing to others. But what happens when you're on the opposite side of these miracles? But we'll talk more about that on the next episode of A Breath of Fresh Air. Tonight's episode included voice acting by Ayana Albertson Gate, as well as your hosts, Earl Roberts and the Cars Gate. Remember to go ahead and research on your own in order to get a more firm understanding of tonight's episode. And if you enjoyed it, make sure to like, subscribe, and share with your friends. You can follow us on social media at A Breath of Fresh Air Pod on Instagram and B O F A P O D on Twitter. Thanks, everyone, and we'll see you next week.